one of the biggest problems that uh, uh, people fail to understand is that the oil that they eat, the free oils, we're talking about olive oil, corn oil, safflower oil, flaxseed oil, these free oils, even though they may be vegetarian, uh, they're not foods. They're, they're actually, at best, uh, medicines, at worst, drugs. When you take and you rip the oil out of a banana, or out of rice, or out of an orange, uh, that's not food anymore. That's just oil. You left everything else behind. As a result, these oils are very toxic. They cause obesity, they promote cancer, uh, many of them promote heart disease. They, with the obesity comes all kinds of problems like type 2 diabetes and damage to the joints. So one of the bigger mistakes people make is they switch to a healthier diet, but they don't put away the bottle of olive oil. You know, uh, the other mistake people make is they think that one kind of animal food is healthier than another kind of animal food. They're, they're basically the same. They all contain the same type of dietary poisons, whether it happens to be eggs or cheese or beef or pork or chicken. You know, these can all be lumped into one category as a category that's a serious burden on the human body. Uh, the other thing that people do is they think that they need a whole big variety of food. You don't. Your diet should be quite simple. As a matter of fact, we have over 2,000 recipes published. And yet in our home, we eat, you know, four or five or six different things. That's basically it. You ought to find a few recipes that you like. Just make them over and over and over and over and over again. You'll love that simplicity. Don't make a big deal out of this. This can be very simple. The other mistake that people make is they think they have to give up salt and sugar. Well, you know, they're not health foods. Salt and sugar aren't health foods. They certainly bring a lot of pleasure to your diet, and most people tolerate these substances very well. It's no detraction from their personal appearance or recovery from disease, but it makes a huge difference as to whether or not you're going to eat the food. So I'll put a little salt and sugar on the surface of the food and maybe a little bit of spice on it to make it taste good so you'll stick with the program. Vegetarian and vegan, they mean all kinds of things to me, uh, but they don't necessarily mean good health. Uh, vegetarians could live on a diet that contains dairy products and eggs, and basically they're liquid meat. I mean, nutritionally, they're getting the same thing as if they eat beef or chicken or pork. So, you know, a vegetarian is commonly a fat, unhealthy person. As a matter of fact, I wrote a whole article called The Fat Vegan. And even a vegan diet where you eliminate all animal foods doesn't have to be healthy. And the first vegan I knew, he was fat and greasy. He uh, lived on potato chips and Cokes. You know, that's a vegan diet. That doesn't mean health. So what I'd ask you to think about when you're trying to save the world from environmental disasters, and you're trying to save the animals from all that suffering, both very important issues, is think about yourself a little bit. Save yourself. I mean, look great so that when you go out and tell people about uh, the importance of of not eating animals to prevent their destruction and not eating animals to prevent the destruction of the earth. Think about the way you convey that message to people. I mean, if you look terrible, you look fat and sick, how many people are going to believe you? But if you demonstrate excellent health, if you're vibrant, if you're young looking, they'll be particularly interested in your messages about animal rights and the environment.